uh, worship service. I'm going to try and do this song. I'm going to try. Notice I said I'm going to try. Lead me, guide me along the way. Lead me, guide me, oh, oh Lord. If you lead me, I will not stray. Lead me, guide me along the way. Oh, Lord, lead me and guide me along the way. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know. Let's just, just move on. Our scripture verses is coming from the 11th chapter of John, and I will be reading verses 25 and 26. And it reads as follows. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believe in me shall never die. Believe thou this. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Next, uh, no, we may bar here for a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, we come again, once again before you in the house of worship. We come as uh, sinners from yesterday. Well, hopefully today we'll be a better person than we were. We come, we thank you for the gift of life and health and salvation that you give to us every day. We are grateful for the privilege of gathering in your name, surrounded by our church family. Thank you for the love, encouragement, and support we find in this community of believers. We give thanks for your provision protection and guidance in our daily lives every day. Help us to live lives of thankfulness and to reflect and look back upon your goodness to those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of Spirit of God. To receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into a covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort promote his prosperity and spirituality, to sustain his worship ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospels through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportments, to avoid all tattletaling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and be mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of the covenant and the principles of God's word. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. That, that church covenant says a whole lot. And if we abide by it, 
take it to heart. We will walking in righteousness with, with the Lord. Okay, we're moving right along in our worship service this morning. I don't have a whole lot of announcements this morning, but other than uh, I sent out the, the, the class lesson for classes um, that Metsy is having and uh, the Wolverine State is having. I didn't take the Wolverine State because I'm classed out. I'm taking the one for Metsy uh, Church Parliament to procedures. And that's an uh, important class that we have talked about it earlier in our onset of our young church life, uh, this church. And it uh, comes out of this teaching how to conduct meetings and that it should be done all in love and on one accord. If you ever want to see Christians fight, have a church meeting. Have a church meeting, okay? Uh, no, we haven't had one, and uh, but maybe we will. Not that I neglecting them, but uh, we only have a few folks that's making some donations to the church uh, who would be in on the finances. But I'm going to go over my October 1st, um, let's do that that first Sunday after church, be prepared. Uh, what we have got coming up facing us financially. And by next week, the churches, uh, we would have paid our registration for the parent body, uh, which is Metsy, Metropolitan. So all of the classes that is offered, you all can take them without having to pay extra money. That's the purpose of it. And I'm teaching all as much as I can, but I do need some growth. Uh, you ought to get involved. And I've been, I asked the question a couple of Sundays ago, if I go on and set up a class, a, a Christian leadership school, that's a CLS, would you all attend? It takes money for to set it up because I have to pay to Nashville $150 just to register and for the class course cards, then we'll have to pay for a teacher, a certified teacher, because the school will be certified. I didn't really get an amen. Uh, we would have to start at the beginning of the COP curriculum, which is one of the biblical foundations started in phase one. Uh, one of the classes would be how the Bible came to be. Another one would be Baptist doctrine. And uh, the articles of faith. I've told the articles of faith in our Bible study and the uh, Acts. Those are certified courses. And I may have mentioned this to the, the classes that, to the class, that these are certified classes that I was teaching in Bible study. For a mere fact that I was following the Holy Spirit and wanting you all to know why you believe what you believe, that there is one true God. I don't care who put other gods up there. There is the one true God that created and sustains all of his creation. That's the God that we believe in. That's the God that we worship. That's the God that we serve. So, I, I mean... I would open it up for other members, to other folks to come if they would, but from having participated and served, worship, or uh, been with, network with so many of the other churches, uh, they are far ahead of us and often classes. They may not have to take those beginners classes. And I would want this church members to be a part in the classes. They would be, I'm thinking, on a Saturday morning, giving everybody is who working and from about 8.30 to 11. We have to have 10 hours of study time in order to the school to keep its certification because it would not unless I tell them that they we're going uh, 
you'll have it from May 30 till 11, uh, about three or four weeks. And I wouldn't do I wouldn't do it week to week unless that would fit your best schedule because there's other schools that's having classes. And and I don't want to bump bump heads with those, but you all have to tell me, okay? And I do need to know ASAP. Okay. Are you with me? Um, so it's time for us to, to make our intercessory prayer to the Lord. I, I do have, if there's some extra folks, uh, somebody else you have, do you want to add? I have a Karen, her family. I have Dennis. I have Vernon. And I have Teresa. Uh, those and then my uh, same ones. Okay. Northwest Unity has a, well, they'll be having a funeral. Somebody that I used to know, Vernon, you all probably have forgotten her but when y'all was there. She passed away this week and their funeral is going to be next Wednesday. But anyway, we have to keep the church in prayer. Okay. That's, that's what I'm saying. So if nothing else, any other special prayer requests? Because I'm telling you, we are in some situations that we do need prayer. Yeah. If not, let us go to God in prayer. Shall we pray? This morning, our kind, gracious Heavenly Father. Father, we're going to call to say, Lord, we praise you, we worship, we adore you. And we thank you. Father, we have so much to give you thanks for. Even in the midst of the situations that we find ourselves in and the wicked that's going on, wickedness that's going on in our society, your grace and mercy overrides all of that. And Father, we said thank you. But Father, in obedience to your word, when you says, we cast all of our cares upon you, we are bringing situations and leaving them at your feet because we know that you are a prayer hearing and answering God. Then you ask that we go for the elders to come together and pray for the sick. And today we are gonna we have many among us that are sick and we asking for your healing touch. Father, as I call out these names, you know them all, you know their situation. And we're just asking for your touch this morning. The brother Hooper, brother McClever, Sister Pew, Sister Burnside, brother, Sister Jackie Nicholson, Sister Barnes, Sister Knapp, Sister Wallace's great grandson, Sister Griffin, Sister Teresa's stepfather, and her patient, Sister Butler, Randy and his mother, Brother McGowan, Sister Holloway. Dennis Carroll, Sister Cole, Brother Crosley, Brown Servo, Dr. Kenzie, Brother Kenzie, Sister Williams, Sister Burton, uh, Father, Sister Montgomery. Father, we just thank you. Oh, boy. And Father, we ask asking you just touch them with whatever they need, a, a healing touch from you. Father, we just thank you for your touch this morning. Because you are the doctor. You are the doctor, not a doctor. And whatever the need is, Father, you, you can and you will supply. And Father, we thank you. We thank you. And Father, we have so many that is needing a confident touch. Many is from the loss of a loved one. Then others is from just having uh, anxiety, and need your comfort and touch as we are concerned about the situation that's going on in our society. And then there is situation within the family that causes us our peace to be become disrupted. And we are asking for your condolences and your comfort and touch as only you can. And Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Uh, we don't want to forget uh, Miss Tammy and the loss of her 
a loved one, and Miss Miller is, and Sister Brenda Edwards. Father, we all of these are your children. And Father, we just thank you for your touch this morning. And as we go behind the prison walls, Father, we ask you just touch right now. Touch their minds, touch their spiritual well-being, and let them repent of their sins and come to you. And Father, we want you to just continue to stand with our persecuted Christian brothers and sisters, wherever they are, uh, and whatever adversities and persecution they are facing, Father, stand with them. If they have made the decision that I'm going to stand for Christ, regardless of what difficulties I face, of whatever persecution that my government and others bring on me, and if I have to give up my physical life, it's okay because I will be in the presence of my Lord. Then, Father, I, I just thank you this evening for this morning for touching and protecting. Father, we can we ask you to keep your arms of protection around our school kids, it regardless of they in daycare or in college. There's so much going on in our world that Father, we need you every moment of the day in every aspect that you can give. And you are all knowing, all wise, and everywhere God. And we just thank you. Father, I don't want to forget our churches that is open in your name. Father, let us uh, stand firm and proclaim the truth of your word, not my truth, nobody's truth, but yours. And Father, we'd be so ever grateful to give you all of the glory and the honor because you deserve it all. And Father, I thank you for continuing to breathe on this church as we are standing firm on the truth of your word. Believe in you for your growth spiritually, financially, and numerically. And Father, we just thank you this, this morning. And Father, I don't want to forget our truck drivers as we are. They, we're in a situation. They need you every day. Father, we're asking you this, to get in the driver's seat then touch their hearts, that they will find time to attend worship service some way, somehow, because technology has made it possible for them to be in service regardless of where they are, um, because you that was your doing. And we thank you. We thank you. As you open their hearts, that they will say, I'm going to attend somebody's church. I want to hear the word. And Father, we just ask you to breathe on all of the, our fellow human, human beings around different parts of the world that is suffering devastation. And then the situations that's going on in this country from weather-related disasters. And Father, I ask you just to touch the hearts and the minds of men. Move everything that is not of you remove it from my heart and replace it with a heart of love, a heart of kindness, and a heart of goodness, because you are a God of love, you're a God of compassion, and you're a God of gracious and goodness, and we thank you. And Father, we are praying this prayer, believing that you will answer, because we know you hear, and we give you all of the praises, glory, and honor. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. Okay. This morning, we're going to talk about Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. And I'm coming out of John, the 14th chapter. And I'm going to only use one scripture this morning, and that's verse 6 of John 14. And reading from the King's Game Version, it reads as follows. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. If you want to see the Father, you got to go by Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. As God asked me and led me to this scripture, 
because a couple of things. We need to know or uh, reacquainted or get reminded of who just who Jesus is and what he done for us in our lives. And we need to be reminded that there's only one truth and that's God's truth. And Jesus told one of his disciples that he is, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He said, now, if you want to see the Father, you got to go by me. Well, the setting was Jesus is getting ready to go back to heaven. And he told his disciples, now, I'm getting ready to leave, and I'm paraphrasing this. He said, but I don't want you let your I don't want you to be troubled because I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you'll be there also. Well, Mr. Thomas was one in the group, and that's who asked him the question that led to this answer. He said, how do I know where you're going when I don't know the way there? And that's when Jesus told him, I am the way. I am the truth, and I'm the light. Now, so, the way to the Father is by Jesus. And if we're going to see the Father, we have to go by Jesus. And we have to believe this by believing in Jesus Christ. So I want to answer this question, if we may. So just walk with me for a few minutes. I won't be long. What does this scripture mean to you and I? Make it personal. When it relates to Jesus saying, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the light. Well, let's say this. Let's look at it this way. And let's do a self-inventory. We have to believe with our spiritual self, with confidence, that Jesus is the son of God. He was present in the beginning with God. All things that was created was by Jesus himself. We must believe and accept Jesus for who he is and his sovereign power. Because Jesus Christ is just as much God as we call God the Father. Jesus is the second person and the Godhead, see the Godhead consists of God the Father who has his specific duty, God the Son who is Jesus Christ. He is our, his duty was to go to the cross to save us and reconcile us back to the Father. And then God the Holy Spirit who lives in every believer as our heavenly come. So Jesus is God. And when he said this, uh, and he told them who he was. We have to believe that because we believe the scripture as being God's word. And second, listen, we must believe with an assured confidence Jesus is God by the mere fact. And let's just look at John 1, the first chapter of John, and verses 1 through 4, when it tells us who he is. And John presented him, he said, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He, Jesus is being presented as the word of God and said, and the same was in the beginning with God, that's Jesus. And all things was made by him, that's Jesus. And without him, Jesus, was nothing made that was made. And he says this, and in him was life and the light was the light of men. Men was in darkness because all humanity has sinned and came short of the glory of God. But God was being so loving as he is. He gave his only begotten son to come to earth in human form to go to the cross, to reconcile all of us who believe in Jesus and accept him as our personal savior, be reconciled back to the Father. And that's why Jesus can say with such a, with a 
And if you're going to see the Father, you have got to come by me. It was Jesus that made the sacrifice, playing man send it, that we could not pay ourselves. I know I went all past my notes, but that's okay. Listen. I want to give us expound just a little bit on Jesus being the way. When we travel, we must know the way to our destination. And let me put it this way. If I leave here going to Kroger's after service, I have to know how to get there. Because if I don't, I'm going to get lost. And Jesus is telling his disciples, if you're going to see the Father, you're going to have to come by me. And if I'm going to get to Chicago, I'm going to have to know how to get there. And if you and I are going to see the Father, we got to go by Jesus. And we first have to accept him as our personal Savior. And this is a repetitive statement. Who paid our sin debt by on the cross of Calvary. Because we were unable to pay our own sin debt. Jesus Christ didn't have a debt of sin because he knew no sin. Remember who he is. He is God in the flesh and in the second person. And he put on humanity for the purpose, sole purpose of paying our sin debt. And yes, he is a way because we have to, he went through the cross and we have to believe in his sacrificial death. To get to the Father. So let me say it this way. All believe in Jesus. Died with him on Friday morning. But we got up with him on Sunday morning. Because he took his untainted blood. And paid our sin debt. Okay. Now. Let me say this. Back to this. Our earthly traveling. Going places. Has it ever amazed you when you get on a airplane going from point A, from going from here to Houston, Texas, how we can get up in that plane and be 30,000 feet in the air, but when it's time for it, when it gets to Houston, Texas, it lands very safe because there is a compass that directing that pilot when to land and have be so many feet in the air, so many miles outside of Houston to make his descent down into the ground. Jesus is our compass. He is the way to the farm. Listen, we all said we want to go to heaven. We all believe in Jesus Christ, but we have to believe him and go by him and accept his sacrificial death in order for us to see Jesus, okay? Let me just talk to you a little bit about him being the truth and what makes him the truth. That's the question uh, some doubters would say. I, there's no doubt in my mind that he is the truth because he's God. What makes him the truth? Simply because he is God who is an all known and he is a man that cannot lie. And whatever he promises will come to pass. When he tells his followers, that's you and I, to go into all the world, preaching and teaching, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that he will be with us until the end. As he's always been there. Whenever we go out to witness, whenever we encounter somebody to witness to them, he's God through Christ, excuse me, Christ through his spirit, that lives in every one of us is present. He's always present. The point I'm trying to make right here is this. When he says, I am the way, I'm the truth. You tell the truth and I will be with you. There is no other truth but the truth of God. That's the truth. And we just studied in our Sunday school lesson about the truth being truth. And let me tell, reiterate, it will stand on its own merit. 
We do not have to add to it. We do not have to take nothing away from it. Just say it, the truth. Isn't it something about the truth that it just makes believers out of unbelievers? When I'm saying believers in this case is one who doubts what is saying the truth, the truth just has that power to open up those doubtful minds that they'll say, oh, she's telling the truth. Oh, he's telling the truth. It's just something about the truth. It is believable. And therefore, I can say again, the truth will stand on its own merit. I'll be finished in a minute. I don't want us to look at the phrase when Jesus said, I am the life. And if you go back to John 1 and 4, when he says, and in him, who is Jesus Christ, was life, and the life was the light of man. Listen, in this life, our life is dependent upon Jesus Christ and his undying love and grace. He gives, he's the essence of our being from everlasting to everlasting. Listen, Jesus being the life, it is him that we have hope. Let me tie this together. He is our life because he already warned us and he already told us, I'm the way back to the Father. And if we plan or have a, a hope of a spending a life after this life, earthly life is over, that's eternal life and the presence of God, we must accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior. And without Christ's sacrificial death on the cross, there is no hope. There is none. Let me look at it this. Let me let's look at it from this example that it was through Jesus' sacrificial shed blood that he sanctified us. He set us aside out of this sinful world. He justified us, gave us a right standing with the Father. And each time the Father God looks at us, he sees the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. I'm just trying to make it plain. He reconciled us. He had brought, brought us back in to an intimate, loving relationship with the Father. Jesus' blood. And lastly, he regenerated us that we are not that old self. We are a new creation in Jesus Christ. Jesus shed blood. So why would we have to try and go any other way to the Father other than by Jesus Christ, who have done what we cannot do for ourselves? And let me say this. In Christ, in him being the life, he gave us life. And he tells us in John 10 and 10 and 11 that I came that you will have life and have an abundant life. That is Jesus' unconditional love for us, that we would live an abundant, glorious, peaceful life. And that's when he says, cast all your cares on me. I'll take care of Because he doesn't want his people, he loves us just that much, to be bogged down with the sinfulness or the wickedness or the evilness, whatever term we want to use with this world, because it is in stark contrast to God and his righteousness. And that is a demonstration of God's love. And our faith in him does a lot for us. Let me say this. 
before I get ready to close. Jesus is our only hope and being our only hope is the true measure of our righteousness. Because remember this, the switch was made on the cross of Calvary. Christ took our unrighteousness on himself, which is sin, and gave us his righteousness. That's the greatest switch that was ever made. There will be no other that can replace what Jesus Christ done for his people on the cross. And let me just give us some closing points as I, as I get ready to close here. And this, and I want to reiterate this to you. Jesus is the way. You're going to see the Father, you're going to, have to go by Jesus. He is true because he is God. He is life. It is in him that we have our being from beginning to the end. Jesus is Alpha and Omega. He's from everlasting to everlasting. And I'll repeat John 1 that says he was in the beginning with God. He is the word of God. And everything that was created was done by him. So he has been here before time as we know it, before everything was done, Jesus was here. Okay. And when he declares that nobody is going to come to the Father except they go by him, listen, take it to heart, because he is the door through which all Christians must enter to gain the Father, gain access to the Father. And that is rightly so, because considering the price that Jesus paid, paying our sin debt that we couldn't pay, reconciling humanity back to the Father, has earned him the right, if there was such a thing, to be humanity's doorway to the Father. Not for us to re mention or reiterate that he is God and the second person who was present during all creation. Listen, that's why he is God. He is the door for us to get to the Father. And consider this, if you go into your own house, you go through the door to gain access to your house. And being that God that created us for us a mansion, we have to go through the door. The door is Jesus Christ. One other thing else, I think Jesus being to all believers, he gives of the life that is contrasting with the life of this world and its immoral standards and practices. Christ is life, is one of righteousness, manifesting his righteousness for the world to see through us. His righteousness consists of joy, love, peace, kindness, long suffering, compassion, and meekness. All of the good things and the righteousness of Christ. And uh -huh. we've already mentioned that he gives us an abundant life to live in harmony with him and one another. And if I can say this, we cannot say that we are Christian and living a life of sin or a life in the world because the world is filled with sin and anything goes in the world. So when we are in Christ, we're going to live according to God's standards and his righteousness. And when we live in righteousness in our daily life, we are manifesting the righteousness of Christ for the world to see in us. Remember who we are. We are Christ's ambassadors as we share the light of Christ for others to see. We are witnessing Christ 
daily through our lifestyle. We don't really, we, we have been commanded to witness words, but we can witness through our lifestyle, through how we live, showing that, I, yes, I'm a child of God. And next year, and in doing so, we live that life to the fullest. And I'm almost finished here. I want to say this. Through Jesus Christ, it's that all humanity can serve God as believers have been given a right standing with the Father. It was through Jesus' shed blood, as we said earlier, and he has forgiven us of our sin. We do not have to walk around with our heads down, moaning and bemoaning the sins that we have forgiven, we have committed, because Jesus, through his shed blood, has forgiven us of our sin and have given us a right standing with the Father. And that is praiseworthy within itself. When we consider and take into total consideration of who Jesus is, what he's done for us, what he continues to do for us, it is worthy of us saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for you giving your son and the son giving his life for little old me so that I will live this, I'm saying making it personal that I will live in eternity in your presence. Jesus is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. Take him with you. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, now is a good time to make Jesus your choice. You have everything to gain by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and everything to lose by rejecting him. Let me say this. As your personal Savior, as, let me rephrase it, Jesus as our personal Savior, has paid our sin debt. We have a heavenly bank account. And if we've accepted Jesus Christ, it has a zero balance because Jesus has paid it all. Now, if you're out of Christ, you'll have a balance on your heavenly bank account. You have to accept Jesus Christ for your heavenly bank account to be marked, paid in full. Let us pray. As I open the doors of the church and if you're here, I want to join this branch of Zion. You're free to do so by Christian experience or by letter or by baptism. Yes, we'll make that happen. You can open your mic, and say so, or uh, send me a text, or go on our website, theshepherdministry.org, go to membership, complete the membership, and email it to me. Father God, we just thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for him being the way, the truth, and the life, because he shed his precious blood on the cross, paying our sin debt. And for that, we'd be so ever grateful and give you all the praises, the glory, and the honor. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Let us do our closing song. God be with you. God be with you. Until we meet again. Amen. Okay, thank you much. This is